Now we've looked at solving quadratic equations using a graph. Now we're going to look at using factorization. So we need to think back to our factorizing checklist. The first thing we're going to look for is a highest common factor, then a difference of two squares, and finally a trinomial. So to find the roots or zeros of a quadratic equation without a graph, we must factorize and solve. And remember that when we're solving, that means that we're making our function of x equal to zero. Now, remember, if two numbers are multiplied to give zero, then at least one of them must be zero. And that's going to help us when we come to solving our equations. Now, the first example, we want to factorise fully and find the solutions for 3x squared minus 6x equals zero. So, the first thing on our factorising checklist is a highest common factor. We can identify that there's a highest common factor of 3x squared and minus 6x of 3x. And so that's going to be outside our bracket, and inside our bracket is going to be x minus 2, and we're going to make that all equal to zero. So what either the 3x or the x minus 2 term must equate to zero in order for us to solve this equation. So we're going to let 3x equal zero, and to isolate x, we're going to divide both sides by 3 and get x equals zero. And then we're going to let x minus 2 equal 0. And if we add 2 to both sides, we're going to get x equals 2. So the solution to 3x squared minus 6x equals 0 is x equals 0 and x equals 2. So in this example, we want to factorize fully and find the solutions for 5x squared minus 45 equals 0. So again, we're looking for a highest common factor. This time it's 5. So we're going to have 5 upon x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to simplify this. And we can do that by dividing both sides by 5 to eliminate the 5 in front of our bracket. And that leaves us with x squared minus 9. And we can identify this as a difference of two squares. And a difference of two squares is when we can square root both of our terms and have different signs in our brackets. So we've got x minus 3 upon x plus 3, and that's going to equal 0. So this time, either our x minus 3 bracket has to be 0, or our x plus 3 bracket has to be 0. So we're going to solve for each of these scenarios. So x minus 3 equals 0. We add 3 to both sides, we get x equals 3. Or we've got x plus 3 equals 0. And if we take away 3 from both sides, we're going to get x equals negative 3. And these are the solutions to this quadratic function. Now, in this example, we want to factorise fully and find the solutions for x squared minus 6x minus 7 equals 0. Now, there's no highest common factor. It's not a difference of two squares. So this time, we've got a trinomial. So we need to work out what our two brackets are going to be. So first of all, we're going to look and see what our magic number is. And that is going to be negative 7 because it's a unitary trinomial. And we need to find factors of negative 7 that are going to add to give us negative 6. And so we know that because there's a negative 7 at the end, our biggest factor is going to be negative. So we've got negative 7 and plus 1. And that does give us negative 6. So our brackets are x minus 7 upon x plus 1 equals 0. So we're solving. So x minus 7 must be 0 or x plus 1 must be 0. And we're going to equate x minus 7 to 0. And we're going to add 7 to both sides, giving us x equals 7. And we've got x plus 1 equals 0. And if we take away 1 from both sides, we're going to have x equals negative 1. And these are the solutions to this trinomial. Now, if we've got some harder quadratic equations, so a non-unitary uh, coefficient of x squared. So in this example, we want to factorize fully and find the solutions for 8x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Our magic number is the 8 multiplied by the negative 3. And that gives us a magic number of negative 24. And we need to find factors of negative 24 that are going to add together to give us that positive 2. Now we've got a negative number at the end. So our brackets are going to have different signs. And the biggest factor is going to be positive. 
So we've got 24 and negative 1, which doesn't work. 12 and negative 2, which doesn't work. We've got 8 and negative 3 that doesn't work, but 6 and negative 4 do work. So we're going to substitute in 6x minus 4x in place of the plus 2x. That gives us 8x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Now we're going to look at the first two terms, the 8x squared plus 6x, and we're going to factorise them. So the highest common factor is going to be 2x, and that's going to be upon 4x plus 3. And then we're going to look at the second two terms, and that's the minus 4x minus 3. And remember, we want to have a repeated bracket, so we're going to take out a negative 1 upon 4x plus 3, and that's all going to equal 0. So our first bracket is going to be 2x minus 1. And our second bracket is going to be the repeated bracket 4x plus 3. And all that's going to equal 0. So either the 2x minus 1 bracket has to equate to 0, or the 4x plus 3 bracket has to equate to 0 to solve this equation. So 2x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to add 1 to both sides to get 2x equals 1, and divide both sides by 2 to get x equals a half. Or we've got 4x plus 3 equals 0, and we're going to take away 3 from both sides to get 4x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 4 to get x equals negative 3 quarters, and those are the solutions to 8x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Our final example, we want to factorise fully and find the solutions for 10x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Same process. First of all, we want to find the magic number. 10 multiplied by negative 3 gives us negative 30. And then we want to look for factors of negative 30 that add together to give us negative 1 because there's no coefficient in front of the x term. So we know that our brackets are going to be different signs because of the negative 3 at the end. So we've got negative 30 and 1 that doesn't work. Negative 15 and 2 doesn't work either. But negative 6 and 5 do add together to give us negative 1x. And we're going to replace that negative 1x. So we've got 10x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 3. And that's going to equal 0. So we look at the first two terms and look for the highest common factor, and it's going to be 2x, and that's going to be upon 5x minus 3. Then we're going to look at the second two terms, which is our plus 5x minus 3. Remembering we want a repeated bracket, so we're just going to have a highest common factor of plus 1 upon 5x minus 3, and all that's going to equal 0. So our first bracket is going to be 2x plus 1, And that's going to be upon 5x minus 3, and that's going to equal 0. So 2x plus 1 has to equal 0, or 5x minus 3 has to equal 0 to find the solutions to this trinomial. So 2x plus 1 equals 0. We're going to take away 1 to give us 2x equals negative 1, and x is going to equal negative a half. And then we've got 5x minus 3 equals 0. We're going to add 3 to get 5x equals 3 and divide by 5 to get x equals 3 over 5. And so x equals negative a half, and 3 fifths are the solutions to this equation.